So for me, um, I recognize uh, the, the agility of being a storyteller. Fragility? Agi agility. Agility. It's the most agile form. Sometimes storytellers speak through paint. Because I think music is storytelling too. And it's not the melody. It's the structure underneath the music. And you don't actually listen to the structure underneath the music, but it goes into you in a way that you're unaware. And that structure actually will lead you to a place, or if it's bullshit, it will lead you nowhere. Music's so how do you absolutely how do you teach or direct an actor or a dancer to be a better storyteller? Uh, you just simply tell them or or you confide in them why you think the story should be told in this way. And you ask them, okay, so we want to get to the point where this part seems chaotic. Like for example, we need this part to be chaotic because the chaos allows the audience um, to be agitated so that this one section, this one monologue, or this one thing that happens here, there's a real payoff. So how do we how do we make the chaos more chaotic to allow that the the element that follows to land properly? So I just say, well, that's what I'm trying to do, directing it. How can we? How can you help us? And then sometimes the you know the designer, the LX designer will say, how about this? I was like, I love it. And then the actors go. Um, maybe we jump off the stage and we do that right, like, in the grate. Can we light them there? I love that. Let's do that. If you get everyone on board with the goals of the storytelling, we're, we're all invested in being storytellers. I contribute through uh, the application of, of dirt. I'll give you a great example. I was working on the set in New Mexico uh, in a film called Woman Walks Ahead. And there's a fantastic speech that I had to learn in Lakota. Uh, and I played Sitting Bull, the great hunk papa leader. And um, at one point, he gathered up um, uh, s basically sand. And he was standing in front of this commission, and he let the sand. Uh, you know, the character let the sand drain out of his hand while he was talking to them. And he said, I will not let you take any more land from us. Not even one speck. And he, and he held a piece of the, like sand. That was, that was my idea. And I, you know, did this in person. And the director goes, I like, I like it. Let's do that. So it was New Mexico, it was like kind of, that was how it was. And then a big storm came through. And uh, we hadn't shot all the coverage for it yet. And the ground was saturated. And, I came t and it came time for me to do that scene, and it was like just clumps. The sand wasn't pouring, there was no sand. It was all s saturated with water. And I was like, we have a problem. Uh, so, well, first of all, it's not going to match the master. And then for these close-ups, we're not going to have sand just pouring out and drifting. And the, and the greensman, that's his job, greensman said, I have sand. I kept sand. I kept <laughs> extra sand um, uh, so it wouldn't get wet. <clears throat> and he brought out the sand. And I grabbed that sand. And I did the scene. And I was like, that man told that, that guy's a storyteller. Right. He understood the importance of how to tell it. He told a story through dirt. We all contribute. 
The scene would be nothing without that man.